I thought I'd just make one up today, so let's just have a quick look at the materials first. I always have the pallet this way around so I know exactly where everything is. We've got ultramarine, lemon yellow, pines grey, lizard crimson, raw sienna, burnt umber and light red. Three brushes, large ache, number three rig, a three quarter inch flat. Cutman watercolours, squeezed out and allowed to dry. We've got a tissue, water. Actually got a new tea towel, which uh, should be a bit more absorbent than the last one. Let's get some of that excess water off that big brush. The paper's 15 by 11, Fabriano. Held on these, uh, this piece of 9mm ply by these big bulldog clips. So let's have a... Let's do it. So I'm going to start with clean water. Now one of my favourite places to paint is the, the Highlands up in Scotland. So I'm going to just make one up with that, with the Highlands in mind. So I'm going raw sienna, bit of, bit of lizard and crimson in there as well. Just bash it in. Don't worry about it too much. Uh, what else should we throw in? Clean the brush. Take the excess off on your tea towel. Light red, a bit of lemon yellow, sort of orangey colour. And just pop some of that in as well. That's some nice light colours. Let's get a bit darker now. Let's go with uh, ultramarine and Payne's grey and just bring that in from either side a bit more less water, obviously now you've got plenty of water on the paper now so you don't need so much on the brush so more paints, less water, more paints and then just brush it in and because it's wet you're getting these nice soft edges as soon as it starts to dry it'll go, you'll get the hard edges and it'll just start to look rubbish. So get it in while you can, as soon as it dries stop and then start on the distant mountains or hills, whatever they are. So that's a bit of that in, a bit more. So it's still getting soft so I can just keep on putting it in, putting it in from either side as long as it's still wet. It'll just blend in nicely. Uh, a bit more raw sienna. Watching these reservoirs that build up at the bottom. Right, so I think I'll. That's enough of that. So I'm going to start with the furthest mountains. So I haven't cleaned the brush because we want all these sky colours still on there anyway. So just enough water to keep the airs together, that's all you're looking for. So where should we have them then? Uh, and I'll just take that up first and just watch that there. Watch the little, uh, with it sort of dripping down a bit much. So where should we have the horizon line? So about, well, I'm going to come down, I'm going to put them up there somewhere. So have like a sort of mountain there. Big hills, raw sienna, an ultramarine, So I'm just pulling down the reflections as I'm going, going along. See how it's starting to dry now. Just dipping the very tips in, just enough to bring the hairs back together on the hike when the brush starts to get a bit too dry. Bigger mountains over on that side. Pull down the reflections. And the paper's starting to stretch, so I'm just going to pull it tight. So it's nice and flat.
that's the most distant part in. So we want to come a bit, a little bit closer now. So we want it a bit stronger. And maybe we can see a few greens now. So I still haven't cleaned the brush. So I'm just going into lemon yellow. Let's stick another layer in. So we'll have uh, another one coming down, something like this. Bit of land. And again, I'm going to pull those reflections down while I've got the colour on the brush. Bit of burnt umber in there as well. Something a little bit darker. Now let's move over on this side and stick another layer in. The more layers you get in, the more depths you get and the more uh, interesting your painting is to look at. Uh, so this one, let's, let's stick some uh, trees in this time. Now the easiest way of doing trees Get the paint nice and dark, lemon yellow, Payne's grey, nice chisel edge, pick your starting point, I'm going to go about there and I'm just going to flick up like this and it just looks like trees going up, so you just vary the height, keep getting more paint on your brush, up and down, up and down, up and down plenty of paint and it's just an easy way to create the impression of a load line of trees I'm going to do a reflection so I'm going to put some land down there I think clean the brush raw sienna and then just, just go up there Bit of lemon yellow, ultramarine. Uh, raw sienna, lemon yellow, ultramarine. Just trying to vary it as I come down. Bit of pines grey, then umber. I work out how far do I want this to come out now. So I'm, I reckon somewhere about like that. Wish. Uh, We do with this land. I'm going to sweep this round I think. I'm going to sweep it round so I'm just going to go right the way across over to there something like that. Maybe a bit of light red just to liven it up a bit in the foreground. Something like that. Nice dark bit for the shoreline. Bits of rocks and mud and stuff just going off into the water. So let's just do something on this side, I think. Uh, maybe a few more trees. A few more trees. Back into the lemon yellow. Pines grey. Something like that. And then again, just, just flick it up. Work out where you want your trees to go and just flick it up all the way. That'll do. And then let's just stick some land below that. I've uh, just cleaned the brush. I want a lighter colour, so I'm just going raw sienna. Just pushing it up to the bottom of the trees. Lemon yellow, ultramarine. A bit of burnt umber. Lemon yellow again. 
and then just deciding whether to bring this land around or I might just leave it. Something like that, I think. Something like that. Um, I think a little boat. Let's stick a little boat in there somewhere. So I'm going to switch to the uh, rigger. I just want—I don't want too much water on it. I just want it a little bit damp. Just a clean, damp brush and a piece of tissue in your other hand. Clean tissue, and then just pick somewhere. Don't put it right in the middle. Um, but you want to be nice somewhere dark, so you get more of a contrast. So it shows you know, your, your boat will actually show up. Um, I'm thinking. So you now this is the darkest part, but it just doesn't. I think it'll work better without her. I think. Remember to keep it nice and small, because otherwise you'll lose the, the scale of the thing. Just nice and small. Also, make sure your paint's dry before you stick your your finger in it, like I've just done. I think that was just about dry then. These are wet, so I'm making sure I don't put my hand on a wet part and mess it up completely. But you can see, just keep it nice and small because it just helps create that, that sense of scale. Actually, let's stick another one. In fact, I might, I might go for three. I might go for three. Let's stick one just there. Try and vary the height of them as well. Some are further away, some are a bit closer. I think the brush is too dry, that's why the paint's not coming off. So I'm making this one a little bit smaller. A little bit smaller and then I'll just take another one. Just over here, I'll do this one a little bit a little bit bigger. Yeah, I've done that one too big. See, obviously, the bigger you make it, the, the sort of smaller you're making the scene. I've done that one a little bit too big, but I'll let it go now. So I did. And then, if you want, you can always just pop something, just a little. The whole what, what do you call it? The actual boat bit under the sail. I can't remember what you call it. Um. And obviously, don't forget the reflections. But don't you don't have to do them as strong as the sails as the bit above. Just a, just a hint, a hint of something there. Oh, do a bit more on that one, I think. We've got a couple of birds somewhere. Again, just keep them small. I think we're nearly done. A bit of dark colour on the brush. Pick a quiet corner. I think this is still, I mean, it's just about dry enough. I think that 
one's uh, finished. Well, there's the finished painting, let's just go in and have a closer look. So we've got this nice orange glow that continues right down from the uh, sky, right into the water. And then as soon as the sky's in, get the background mountains in and then as long as you've done it quick enough the paper will still be wet so you can pull the reflections down straight away. Again continue with the middle ground. And then just flick up with the, the height brush like a chisel edge just to help create these these uh, tree the tree line there. Then we've got our little boats there on the horizon creating a bit of life. I'm forgetting our little birds up there. Well I hope you like that. Thanks for watching. Keep practicing. Any questions please ask and I'll see you again soon.